This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this is the last of uh, three lectures on budgeting, where we're going through um, chapter nine of the um, free lecture notes. And we've two uh, last things to look at. Uh, the first one, if you turn to section three of the, uh, of the chapter, uh, you'll see a heading budget styles. Um, that's how we got actually go about organising the budget process. And as you can see, there are two styles. That's what we call top down. Uh, the other style is bottom up. Now, I'm not too sure why I bothered writing that down because you've got it uh, printed in front of you. Uh, but regardless what they are, uh, the top down approach is where the budgets are prepared by senior management and then just imposed, given to the um, operational managers. So, you know, if I'm in charge, maybe I'll prepare all the budgets, I'll do a sales budget, production budget, and so on, and then I'll just give them to the managers um, uh, that are imposed, and that's telling them what they've got to do, that's setting their targets. The other approach, which these days is much more common and certainly regarded as a better approach, is bottom-up, where instead of me simply preparing the budgets for all the departments, I get the individual managers to produce their own budgets. I'll ask the sales manager to give me a sales budget. I'll ask um, whoever's in charge of labour to give me a labour budget and so on. So they prepare the budgets and it's then my job, if I'm in charge of the whole budget procedure, it's my job uh, both to check that their budgets are sensible, uh, but also obviously to make sure they're coordinated. I said, and I think it was the first lecture, there's not much point in budgeting to produce 100,000 units if the sales department tell me we can only sell 50,000. But that's bottom up. The managers, they produce the budgets my job uh, is to test them and to make sure they coordinate. Uh, and as you see, top down is non participatory. Managers aren't participating in the preparation. Bottom up, we also call it participatory. Um, so that's what they are. Uh, the reason bottom up these days is regarded as being um, a better approach overall is it's likely to be much more motivating. You see, if you're uh, one of my managers, um, if you're uh, the manager in charge of labour, if I just tell you, this is what you've got to do, here are your targets, then you're not terribly likely to be motivated. You weren't involved in it in the first place. If you're involved in preparing them, then you're much more likely even as a matter of pride, to want to achieve or even to better the budgets. So they are regarded as being better in that sense. Uh, and also, you see, top down, there's always a danger that I've prepared the budget, I tell you um, this is how much you're going to spend on labour. But the danger is you might realise it's just impossible to spend, uh, to spend that little. Uh, and you just disregard the budget. You're not even attempting to beat it. So um, bottom up, again, is regarded as being more, more, more motivational. The one big danger to be aware of um, is that in, since managers appreciate that the budget is their target and they're going to be measured on how well they achieve, how well they meet budget, there is a danger they'll over budget. We call it budget padding. And what I mean by that, you see, suppose uh, I've asked you to, you're um, in charge of labour, I've asked you to prepare a budget, and you decide, oh, or you, you think we need to spend 10,000 a month. Well, you know that's going to end up being your target and that your job is to make sure we only do spend 10,000 or hopefully less. 
Um, but what you might do is say, oh, well, I think we need 10,000, but I'll actually put 12,000 in the budget. Because if I put 12,000 in the budget, uh, then I can easily beat budget, you know, and I've uh, performed well, and uh, if there are bonuses, I'll get my bonus and so on. So there is that danger that the managers budget more than they actually need. And so it's very important, I'm the one in charge, it's very important that I'm aware of that danger, and I do challenge the managers when they produce the budget. You know, I do challenge them and say, why do you need this much? You only needed that much last year. Can you do with less and so on? Um, so there's no real solution to it, but it is a danger, uh, a possible problem. And again, the important thing is that I'm aware of that problem and I'm looking for it. Um, so I have really more or less answered exercise four there. How are the department managers likely to feel when figures are imposed on them? Well, as I said, they're likely to feel less motivated. They're just not involved in the process. Uh, can you suggest any arguments in favour of top-down? Uh, oh, a problem arising with bottom-up. Well, the main one is the one I've just mentioned about budget padding. About danger of them over-budgeting. Um, another reason why top-down may prove useful um, is that it's going to be faster. You see, bottom-up budgeting is inevitably going to take longer, getting all the managers to do their budgets, then all the procedure of coordinating and testing them. Uh, and certainly, if for any reason the budget has to be prepared quickly, then maybe there'd be an argument for using top-down, because certainly it is going to be that bit faster. Um, I'm not having to adjust budgets to coordinate, I can produce everything together at the same time. So there we are, that's what you mean by um, budget styles, top down, bottom up. Um, the other bit uh, remaining is on the next page, it's headed up methods of budgeting. And you'll see um, there are three methods you need to be aware of, it's not a numbers and not calculation thing here. And as always, I'm not going to read it in word for word to you. I'll explain basically what the three methods are, but do have a proper read yourself afterwards. Uh, but the first one, incremental, is actually the most common. Uh, and I don't know to what extent um, you might have been involved in uh, budget preparation. Uh, but if you have, um, certainly I think my father most likely is that it's been incremental. Because, <coughs> excuse me, what it is, if I ask, just imagine, um, you are my manager responsible for labour, and I asked you this afternoon to um, go and prepare a budget for next year for labour. Well, I think what you, the thing you're most likely to do is look to see how much we spent last year and then ask yourself, why should it be any different this year? Uh, one reason, maybe there's been inflation and we're having to put wages up. So, OK, you'll take last year's figure and increase it a bit because of inflation. And, of course, the other reason is Maybe we've got more business and therefore we need more labour, not less business, less labour. Uh, and again, you'd adjust it. But that's the most common way of doing things, and that's the incremental approach. Where essentially, if I write very briefly, but I, I did say do read it properly, where essentially you take last year's figures. Last year's actual figures. And you adjust uh, for two things. You adjust for the level of activity. You know, if we're allowed to be twice as big next year, perhaps we'll budget twice as much as last year. Uh, and you adjust for inflation. 
You know, perhaps more obviously something as simple as telephone. How much are you going to spend on telephone? How much are you going to budget on telephone? Take what it was last year. If the business is uh, bigger or smaller, adjust accordingly. And then stick in what you expect um, any inflationary increase to be. And there's the budget the next year. So again, uh, I've said twice, that's certainly the most common approach. Uh, I was going to say easy approach. I'm not saying that is easy. It obviously takes time. Um, but there we are, incremental. However, there is actually a problem with that. Let me give you two examples. First of all, um, perhaps a little silly one and then perhaps a better one. Suppose we were budgeting for telephone. At the moment, our telephones, we use the landlines, we use the national telephone provider, uh, and incremental. Fine. I've already said, last year's figures adjust them. But in fact, maybe there are alternatives available. Maybe we could carry on using uh, landlines with the national, the main telephone provider. Or maybe there are competitors and we could switch to them. Or maybe we could get rid of landlines completely and instead give everyone mobile phones. Or maybe we could, uh, again, scrap the landlines and start using things like Skype, where, you know, you're calling over the computer. So there are alternatives available. Now, the trouble with incremental is we don't consider alternatives. We say, you know, because it's last year's figure adjusted, we're assuming effectively that if we were using landlines last year, that we'll still be using them this year. And yet sometime somebody should consider, might it be better to change to one of the alternatives? And the best time to consider is at the time you're producing your budgets. And this is effectively zero base. Because what we do with zero based budgeting is instead of just assuming we're carrying on as we did last year, um, we look at the, uh, decide what alternatives there are, uh, consider alternatives, stick with the landline, change to mobile phones, whatever. Uh, we cost them out and choose the best. So, okay, we may well stick with landlines, but we may decide it's cheaper to give everybody mobiles. But once we've decided what's the best alternative, uh, then we prepare the budget. So if you get sort of last year's figures, they're irrelevant. List the alternatives available, cost out and choose the best, and then do the budget on that basis. All right, telephone was perhaps a, a slightly silly one, but why not? But here's just one more example. We make desks. We've been making desks for a long time. We've always made them by hand. Uh, and of course, with incremental budgeting, if I ask my production manager to do a budget, he'll take last year's figures, he'll assume we're still going to make them by hand, but he'll just adjust for wage increases and whatever. But maybe there's now a machine that can make the desks. Well, somebody should sit down and decide. Which is better? Should we carry on making them by hand or might it be better, cheaper, whatever, to um, make them by machine? And again, it's budget time. When's the time we should think about it? That's when we're doing our plans for next year. And so with zero base, we would sit down and cost out. What is it if we carry on doing it by hand? How, how will it be if we uh, change to machines? Choose the best. Maybe we do stay by hand, maybe we switch. 
But once we've decided what we're going to do, then we can prepare for budget. So um, I think you'd agree, in principle, it's a much, much better approach. Otherwise, you know, with incremental, we just carry on making them by hand forever. It's a much, much better approach, but there are um, uh, two very big problems. Uh, one is um, it's going to be very time consuming and therefore expensive. I think for fairly obvious reasons. It's much quicker to take last year's figure and adjust than to go through all this exercise of looking for alternatives and costing out and so on. Uh, and the second problem, which is perhaps an even bigger one, is who's going to do it? See, it's, it's tricky this one because um, think about uh, what I just said about production by hand or by machine. My production manager is an expert on how to make desks, but he's not an expert, uh, he hasn't training in um, accounting and costing out. So uh, I'd be a bit scared of re I'm relying on him to do the costings and tell me, oh, desks is cheaper to make by hand or it's cheaper to make by machine. On the other hand, I am an accountant. So I have no problem with the costings, but I'm not as experienced in how we actually go about manufacturing desks. And so it is a problem. It does need expertise. Uh, training. You know, maybe I teach the production manager how to um, do costings, or maybe I, as accountant, have to learn more about the production methods. Or maybe we work as a team. Uh, but the two go together, and because of that, uh, it's quite an involved procedure. And so companies who do use um, zero-based, what they tend to do It sounds easy. Here's the solution. But what they tend to do is every year pick one area to use zero based on. So perhaps this year we'll do zero based on the telephones. But all the other areas we do incremental. And by doing it that way, if this year is just telephones, well, we can get a team together of, you know, the people who actually are responsible for the telephones, but also uh, a team from the uh, accounts department. Next year, uh, perhaps we're doing, um, is it, do we produce by machine or by hand? Well, again, we can get a team together of accountants, accounts department, together with production department, and actually devote the time to it. So um, the standard solution, as I say, um, use zero base. on one, um, I'm sure it's a better word, but one item each year. Uh, use incremental on everything else. And of course, it's a different item each year, so over a period, uh, we'll have ended up looking at each uh, different expense. OK, so that's quite important, zero-based, and um, if you understood me, I hope you agree that the idea behind it, certainly, um, is a lot better. Uh, finally, activity-based budgeting. Uh, obviously, we um, dealt with activity-based costing uh, much earlier on, I think it was chapter two, so we know what that is. Uh, but with activity-based, Sorry, starting on with incremental and zero-based, we're looking at each separate cost, effectively. Uh, with activity-based budgeting, uh, we look more at the activities. You know, we're, just as with the costing, we've looked to see where we're incurring costs in the business and what's causing those costs. 
setting up machines and so on. Uh, and then we prepare the budget activity by activity, um, trying to make the most efficient use um, of all the cost trends. So there we are. That's enough now on budgeting. Uh, we'll leave that chapter.